Hi everybody. On this channel, I create videos packed with lots of great information. So if you like learning new things, subscribe to my channel and join the fun. In this video, I'm going to challenge you to recreate this Excel graph using the R statistical programming language. Unless you have a lot of experience with R, it's not an easy challenge, but you will learn a lot in the process. I know that I did. You might be like me. I know a lot about statistics. I've been teaching statistics for a lot of years, and I'm just now learning how to use R. So I wanted to create a challenge for myself where I would be forced to use R to do something that I can do pretty easily in Excel. So if you don't know R and you need practice in R, this is a great challenge for you. So what I'm going to do is introduce this data to you. I'm going to show you how you can upload this data on your own. And then I'm going to show you just a couple quick tips. I don't want you to see exactly what I did in R because I want you to learn that on your own, but I also don't want you to spin your wheels right from the beginning. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips to get you started. What I have here is some blood pressure data taken over a series of a couple weeks. So I have for each day a reading for my systolic blood pressure and also a reading for my diastolic blood pressure. And then I used Excel to just create two line graphs, one for the systolic and one for the diastolic blood pressure. Now this exact same data I saved in a CSV file, a comma separated values file. And I have that data in the description of this video. Let me show you that CSV file. Here is the data. You can see that there are three variables, the date, the systolic reading, and the diastolic reading. And each one of those data points is separated by a comma. As I stated, I placed this data in the description of the video. All you need to do is copy that data, paste it into a text file, and then you can easily open it in Excel so that you're starting with an Excel data file. That's where I started, and that's what I recommend that you do. So go ahead, open that data in Excel, and then save that file as an Excel data file. Okay, now I assume you have an Excel data file. At this point, we need to read that data from Excel into R. I've opened up R Studio. When working with R, I like to use R Studio because it provides a nice interface. So at this point, I used the read Excel package to read that data from Excel into R. And I recommend that you do the same because it works really well. You should be able to use the same code. When I ran that code, the data was read in and saved in a data frame that I call D. When I click on that D, I can see that R Studio now recognizes that data frame. And you can see that we have three different variables, date, systolic blood pressure, and diastolic blood pressure. All right, I'm gonna close that window just to get it out of our way. Now let me take you to the second tip. Remember your challenge is to create a line graph for both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. And if you're gonna be creating some type of graphic in R, it makes a lot of sense to be using ggplot too. So I recommend that you read about ggplot and look at some examples. And you can use this code right here to get yourself started. When I ran that code, I was able to get a graphic that looked like this. So I was off to a good start. I had two lines representing the two types of data. Before I show you my next tip, let me just remind you, this challenge is so that you will learn this stuff on your own. Because I found that when I hunted for all the information and I tried things and it didn't work and I tried things and they did work, I learned a lot in the process. That's what I'm hoping for you. So as I show you these tips, I'm just trying to steer you in the right direction. I'm not trying to give you all of the answers. So with that said, here's my next tip. Although these lines fit the data pretty well and they look like the original Excel graphic, the lines are not even the right color. So one of the first things that I did was read about how to change the color of the lines. So to save you some time, I found that dark orange and royal blue three match the original colors reasonably well. That's starting to look better, but the scales need work. So that's the next thing I looked at. So here's my next tip. Spend some time finding out how to change the scales, both the X scale and the Y scale. Once you do that, you'll learn about labels and also breakpoints. And that's gonna get you pretty far. Let me show you the next iteration of my graph. Those changes to the scales helped, but they also created some other problems. So let me show you my next tip. 
Spend some time learning about themes and different options within the themes subcommand. You'll find that with ggplot, you can change a lot to any type of plot if you change some of the themes. There are themes for the x-axis, the y-axis, for tick marks, for text, all kinds of different options. So once I played with that for a while, you can see the next iteration of my plot looks quite a bit better. That said, the original Excel graphic did not have a gray background, so I had to do something to figure out how to get rid of that. So here's my next tip. Start looking at other themes regarding panel background, and you'll find everything that you need. Here's the next iteration of my graphic. You can see it looks a lot better now, a lot closer to the Excel original without that gray background. You can see it's getting pretty close, but remember that Excel graphic had a legend, so I had to include that and format it correctly. So here's my last tip. Look into guides, and then also look into theme options regarding legends, like legend position and legend key. And here you can see the final iteration of my graphic, and that looks pretty good. I'm gonna copy it and display it next to the original. All right, here's a reminder of the original version from Excel, and then right below it, this is the one I recreated using R. It looks pretty good, it's not perfect, but I learned a ton in the process, and I saved all of the code that I wrote, so the next time I need to create a graphic, I can use that code to get myself started. All right, before you start on this friendly challenge, let me give you a couple other quick tips. For the most part, I used two sources of information to find all the information that I needed to create that graphic. One was the book R for Data Science. That book is available for free online. So Google it, R for Data Science. You'll find this website right here. R for Data Science is a great book to introduce you to R. And there's a whole section in there about ggplot. So it's worth looking at. That said, most of my questions were answered after punching those questions into a Google search. For example, how do you remove the gray background from ggplot? Just by searching for that, you're gonna get lots of information. Some of it is gonna be really useful. You will find those answers online. You're not the first person asking those questions. So when you have a question, start by Googling it. All right, my friends, good luck with this challenge. I learned a lot doing it, and I hope you will as well. Post some comments along the way. Let me know how you're doing. If you have questions, post those questions. I won't always be able to answer them. Remember, I'm just learning R as well. But we're all in the same boat, so somebody else might be able to help you out. If you found this video interesting and helpful, be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everybody. See you in the next video.